Hey y'all, N4H and H here. I don't know when this video will be published, but uh, the date is April 15th, oh, tax day here in the US. So I don't know what's going on here on the 17 meter band. If it's a contest, I mean, you're not supposed to contest on this band, although I have heard people do it, but there's something going on. There's a QSO going on here on 145. Um, but just as I turn the camera on, it, the inference goes away. Maybe it'll come back. But I was going to show you uh, a, a variable preselector in operation. This radio has built-in variable preselector called VRF, variable RF. Um, it doesn't track the VFO. It's totally independent. You adjust it separately. There is an option. Uh, listen. There's an option to add some external devices called mu tuners, mu tuning preselectors. Actually, you've you've seen videos of those here on the FTDX 5000 MP playlist. Uh, and if you haven't, well, just uh, go back and look for them. There's several, maybe even more than several. Um, but those are used for 20, 30, 40, 60, 80, and 160 uh, meter bands. So up on the higher bands, uh, I just use the VRF. Now, if you don't purchase the mu tuning preselectors, then you can use the variable RF on every band. But the mu tuning preselectors are, uh, you know, tighter, and uh, that's that's better for the lower bands where you're most likely to have some uh, major interference. But here, on the 17 meter band, for some reason, listen to this. There was a QSO going on right here. Well, listen to that. See, there's the QSO. Okay, so when the interference comes back, I'll show you what I'm going to do to deal with it. So until it comes back, let me mention something to you. I'm running DNR, algorithm 4. This is width. So like you guys with the FTDX10, this will be your, what you would have as a width knob. For me, I press a button and then this knob adjusts it. Whatever button you press, this knob adjusts it on the 5000. So by default, it's a 2.4 kilohertz bandwidth. Oh man, are they sending out? So you can hear them here on the frequency where the other station was. I would narrow the bandwidth because they're 2 kilohertz away. So I'm going to go down to 1.8. And then shift. If it's a high metallic sound, shift negative. And then this is the variable preselector VRF. And what I'll do is I want to move that in the opposite direction of where the interference is. Now you might be thinking, well, you've severely cut your receive sensitivity. Yes, but I've also improved the rejection the ability for it to knock down interference from two kilohertz away. Like I said, I don't know what's going on on this band today. It's, it shouldn't be full of contesting. But that's typical with contests. Contesters will get a half a kilohertz away from you sometimes. And in my mind, it kind of makes contesting look bad. Well, I'll, uh, I'll add some footage in here if they come back. Okay, I think I've found it happening again. One kilohertz apart. Uh, Juliet 7, come again, please. 
So both of them are weaker stations. Uh, I'm running intercept point optimization. I don't need the extra sensitivity, obviously. This is a band where a may or may not run amp one. For CW, I probably would run amp one at least, but not for sideband. Much more noise coming in with sideband than there is CW. But you see, I can hear him now. Go up to the 163. Now, since this is 17 meters upper sideband, the interference from the station below is not going to be a honking sound. So I'm going to take the shift in the opposite direction. If it's a lower honking sound, I've told you this many times, you you go positive with your shift. If it's a high pitched metallic sound, you go negative with your shift. Oh, now we got some new tuning. Okay, DNF. Uh, maxing out this DSP over here, aren't I? And there's two units, one over here for the uh, B receiver. And I'm taking the VRF the other way. You can hear it peak at 191. And that will vary according to what frequency you're on. I don't understand this. I mean, I know this is a narrow band, but there's still enough room for these people not to be piled up on one another. I mean, look at the scope. Okay, it's POTA. At least the 162 is. Well, let me undo all this. I'll leave digital noise reduction engaged because, well, I don't operate without it. It has spoiled me. This was the very first radio I ever worked with that had digital noise reduction that didn't make everybody sound like they were, well, sound like you were listening underwater. The next radio I heard to do that was the FTDX-10. And... Uh, so far, those are the two that I know uh, won't do that. Now, with the FT-891, 991, 991A, as long as you, and I've told you this so many times, hopefully those of you who have one of those rigs are, are catching this because I teach things with whatever radio I'm in front of. But the 891, 991, and 991A digital noise reduction, set it to 9, and that'll get rid of that... Uh, underwater sound but it still needs a little bit of help from the front end of the receiver like i'm doing here ipo maybe attenuation always ipo first though maybe attenuation rf gain that way your dsp unit over here is presented with less to have to sort out and it'll do a better job for you uh, i can't stress enough how many times i've had to tell people that because they just it doesn't make sense to them 
And if that doesn't make sense to you, watch my video entitled S Meter to the Left. S Meter to the Left. Uh, but Because it's all about signal to noise ratio. Okay, well, hopefully you got from this what I wanted you to see. Um, you know, people one kilohertz away. The, the first example when I was when I grabbed the camera was two kilohertz away. But you see how I'm how I deal with that, and you can do that with any radio that has these capabilities. The only thing I added that your radio may not have is the variable preselector. Um, the FTDX 101D and MP has that. It's called uh, VC Tune Variable Capacitance Tune, where this one's called VRF uh, Variable RF. And remember, then there's the optional external units for this. I've featured them in other videos. So I'm not going to pan over there and show them to you. Uh, they're pretty pretty good sized units uh, with some rare earth materials they're made from, so they're very expensive, um, called MU, MU, MU tuning preselectors. And that just takes VRF another level. But again, on this 17 meters and up, the VRF is good enough. It's those lower bands where you really need uh, that variable uh, preselector. And if you're wondering what that's doing, just like with the graphic I showed you here, See that little hump? That's representing the fact that I'm moving my maximum sensitivity, if you will. Uh, there's a filter. You see See the skirts are represented there. I'm moving around in, inside of the band. So you got a bandpass filter that narrows it down to 17 meters, and then you got this variable preselector that is allowing you to narrow down within the 17-meter band and choose which portion of the 17-meter band you want to listen to and of course, uh, above and below that, you're rejecting. So it's a very helpful uh, add-on tool, okay? I would say it's not a silver bullet, but it's another uh, tool in your, in your tool chest to help when you're fighting interference, whether it be noise or um, you know, interference from another station. Well, thanks for watching the video. Okay, I hope you found the video helpful and informative. Thank you to the Patreon support team who bring you these videos. If you're watching a video now, it's because of what I call the long haulers. They've uh, joined through the Patreon uh, program and supported this channel for a year and two and even more. Uh, those long haulers are what, you know, funds the channel enough that I can keep these videos coming. So, um, you know, I appreciate any any level you can help, though. Uh, there are three levels of support. You can find one that's comfortable for you if you like this type of content and want to see it continue. Uh, you can vote, as they say, vote with your wallet um, to help uh, offset the cost of doing this. To uh, join that team, go to www.patreon.com forward slash N4HNH. That's R-E-O-N.com forward slash N4H&H. And if you would, give the video a thumbs up, a like. That helps us out with YouTube's search algorithm and costs you nothing, and you're actually helping the channel uh, by doing that. And also consider subscribing to the channel. That helps as well. If you do subscribe, be sure to click the notification bell so you'll be notified each time I upload a new video, usually two a week, occasionally a third um, and also, finally, if you would, please share the link to this video on social media, text message, email, or phone a friend. Hey, thanks again for watching, and 73 from N4HNH.